Welcome back to New Money. This evening we're discussing short-term insurance. My guest is Craig Poger. If you'd like to email me, you can send your query to info at anchorcapital.co.za. Craig, before we go on to our emails, I wanted to ask you about jewellery. The first thing, with the rand fluctuating all over the place, it's difficult. And the second question is, if your jewellery is in a safe deposit box, can you just take the valuation and go to a jeweller and go to someone who gave you the valuation and ask them to up it? Yes. So you don't want everyone running from safe deposit boxes, taking out all their jewellery, taking it for valuation and then taking it back. Absolutely, Brian. So, um, yes, you can take those valuations and send it to your jeweller to get it updated as opposed to moving all the jewellery outside of the safety deposit box or even leaving your home. But if you do need to take those items, for whatever reason, be it a new item or the jeweler may want to obviously appraise it differently or there's a jeweler that you want to take it to, just remember to advise your broker and insurer that those items are leaving the safety deposit box and will be out over a certain period of time because obviously that's a material change to the risk. So that's very important. The, we always advise every two years to get your uh, valuations updated. Again, to your point, obviously the rand dollar fluctuation considerably we would pick a ceiling or suggest to the client to pick a ceiling that accounts for the fluctuation in the rand dollar. So uh, it's, a, it's a tricky one, um, but again, very important is to make sure that you try and keep ahead of those fluctuations. And if need be, keep advising your broker of these changes in terms of your jewellery. I think I asked you this question some years ago, but maybe with all the modernisation, can you not insure your jewellery at dollar price? So, no, Brian. No. We, I think, so it's we did, we did, I think yeah. maybe five or ten years ago I asked you that. Yes, so it's a, it's a RAND based policy and you'll be reinstated or the item will be replaced in the RAND, so you, you would need to insure in RANDs. Okay, well, let's go to Simon, Kim, Simon in Kimberley, and I'm just going to wait for it to come back onto my screen. He says, I received a renewal letter from my broker every year. Is it the broker's responsibility to point out to me if there are any changes to wordings and conditions of my policy? In other words, have, co have companies sneaked in more? more conditions? So there's definitely more conditions, Brian, uh, with absolutely no doubt. It's the broker's responsibility. We try out very often as, as best as we can to point out these material facts. And more importantly is to obviously the policy hold and ensure to understand what they're reading. And I say that with respect because if, if, if you don't, then chat to your broker, get advice, understand those new conditions, those new warranties that have come into place. Um, you know, the insurance companies don't just throw these warranties out or these endorsements or changes to the policy. It comes via certain channels and we communicate it and we highlight these, these are very, very important material items at, at, at renewal or there might just be general changes to policy con terms and conditions which we advise clients. Well, Craig, my doctor changed my prescription. I don't take a sleeping tablet any longer. They say to me, at 11 o'clock, take out your short-term insurance <laughs> policy, start dreaming, start reading. And he says, you don't need a sleeping <laughs> tablet. Murray at Bedford View says, can I include under my normal vehicle policy cover when I hire a vehicle and decline the, the, the the insurance from the car hire company. So Brian, there's so many th question marks around that in that, is that a commercial vehicle, meaning is it a business use vehicle? Very often a company might have a fleet policy where those type of vehicles might be included. If that vehicle is going to be hired whilst your car is in for repairs, well then potentially you could rely on your, your insurance companies. But if for example it's just a leisure and you're going on holiday and you're renting a car, it's very uh, unusual to find an underwriter that will just pick up that, that insurance. So my advice would be to take it through the rental company um, unless your, your underwriter, as I say, I mentioned, you have a fleet policy or those conditions or those type of things uh, uh, obviously allow to have that car insured. But don't just take for granted that your policy covers your motor vehicle when you're renting. Well, the danger is when most of us travel, we hire a car for business. Yes. And whereas maybe our own policy is, is, is covered to and from work, but not for business, uh, that would then be considered business. Very then Simon in Welterfred and Park says, I've just had a claim repudiated because I did not repair the damages that I was un unaware to the roof of my home. What can I do? Now, maintenance of your home is very important, particularly more so in the Cape with all the rains they've had. W you know, in, in the Gauteng, we don't get too much rain in the winter. But is there anything that Simon can do? So, you know, so it's, it's, it's a difficult one. We often find homeowners' claims is where the issues is with wear and tear, no waterproofing. 
it is up to the insured. The onus is on the insured to make sure that their home is regularly checked, maintenance is done, because there is there's no insurance company is going to pay for wear and tear or to have your water waterproofing redone. So it is, it's a concern. And the advice is to have these done regularly, knowing that you're going into the winter months. Prior to that, you need to make sure that your, your roof and your ceiling and all the things that you've done is, is, has been checked and, and maintained. Craig, while a relationship with a broker, and people need to understand this, is twofold. You communicate with the client, but if there's any changes, the client's got to communicate with you because they're not aware. You're not aware of what's happening. But do you not think it's not a bad idea every six months just to send a little circular? Uh, please check your roofs. Do you, I don't know. If, Brian, do you do anything like no, that? No, absolutely. We we try to communicate as best as we can and as often as we can. Um, to and, and again, over the last couple of years, there has been some uh, material changes to wordings in policy post COVID. And obviously, when we try and we, we reach out about maintaining your roof and your ceiling, there always, there's always things to do and check on your insurance policy. But yes, very important to communicate these things. And yes, we do do that. And Simon does have recourse. He can go to the short-term ombudsman. Correct. He take, if he thinks he's been unfairly treated, he can take it to them. And they are very independent. They will assess and see whether there's anything they can do. I mean, I've had Edith Takira McKinnon, who's you know, CEO, and it's, 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 the, the recoveries they've made is amazing. Uh, Burn in Port Elizabeth says, I use freight forward to transport imported goods and they arrange the cargo insurance. I was recently advised that this coverage may not be adequate. Should I be talking to my insurance brokers about this? Absolutely, Brian. But don't they normally insure for cost, cost plus? So marine insurance is, is very specific and not every insurer has an appetite or does marine insurance. Remember, there's things called eco terms, which tells you where the risk attaches when you import goods. And also there's basis of valuation. To your point, do you do it at a RAV cost plus 10% or a RAV cost plus 15%? Consult your broker. Understand the marine policy that you're purchasing. As I mentioned, eco terms to see where the risk attaches in that leg of the import. And then, of course, you have the choice of insuring what we refer to as basis of valuation in insurance terms. When that goods arrive, do you, how do you want to insure that? You want to insure it at, at selling price, at cost price, and, and work it out. But you do need... The, the technicalities and the specialised uh, insurer and broker to deal with Craig, that. you can refuse a freight f f with the company that's import bringing the goods in and just do it all with your broker. Is, what is your advice? Do you, do you not think it should be done through the brokers, your own broker? Yeah, without sounding biased, yes. I think that a broker has a lot of value to add in terms of advice. Uh, but again, no one policy is the same. So one needs to just to check what your forward is, what, what the various policies are out in the market, and pick the policy that makes sense to you for your commodity that you're using, and also the journey, because again, not every policy is the same. And then of course you've got excesses. What is the excess in the event of a claim on that import? Again, what eco terms are you using and the basis of valuation? So my view is use a, use a broker to, to advise you. Well, you have every right to say that. I mean, I know it, it may, people may be using, and, and what you're saying is, Talk to your broker. There may be big advantages of dealing with your broker. Charles in Hout Bay says, I'm about to rent out a furnished home and I've covered under my current, am I covered under my current policy? So it depends on the rental agreement. Um, you know, that, that home might say, well, um, you, there's furniture in the home, but you need to cover it. But very important, there is a thing called insurable interest, Brian. So whilst you, you're renting a home that's got furniture, you don't technically own the furniture. So if you do, you need to advise your underwriters that you're renting a home with fully furnished and you need to understand that you've got to do that replacement value and then note the interest of that owner of that furniture, of that place, so that your underwriter is aware that if there is a claim to that furniture, that these are the, the, there is an insurable interest. So very important just not to assume that you're covered if you, if you go and rent a home that is fully furnished. And again, check the rental agreement, which is also would speak is to the Is there any cover that falls away when you rent out your property? So yes, there is there's, there's certain covers that would fall away that uh, the insurance companies usually make theft subject to forced entry. Not every policy has that uh, forced entry uh, extension or requirement. So when you rent out your home, theft is subject to forced entry. 
and malicious damage is excluded. So, you know, those are, those are items that we need to be checked with your yeah. insurance. I want to talk a little bit f more about that because obviously people rent their homes out November, December, January, and the next program we'll talk about that. But I want to sneak in one more from Lucille in Bella Bella. She says, do you encourage your policyholders to rather insure for catastrophe than all the little items where many claims occur and cause so much frustration? I think you've answered that one. So I'm going to, sne I'm going to sneak in another one from Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth, come through in, from Hillcrest. There's an automatic belief that if I book an overseas trip, I'm covered if anything goes wrong. I'm sure you'll agree that this is not the case. Other than sickness or accidents which has pre-existing conditions, what should insurers be aware of and what disclosures do they need to make if they are, if, if, if they, if, if to the, uh, see, I, I couldn't read the rest of it, but Craig, I, uh, just briefly, it, it's not just automatic. No, Brian, it's not automatic. I'd like to spend more time on that, but we ran sure. out of time. Age is yeah. obviously material when yeah. taking out a travel policy, and unfortunately, if you, you well, fortunate, you need to disclose the countries that you're travelling, because not every travel policy covers areas where you're travelling these days. So it's very important to also disclose the countries that you're travelling to, and in addition, like you explained, material things like health and uh, pre-existing and credit card payments where you've got automatic insurance i mean one must always realize that there are pre-existing conditions and you're not automatically covered you Agreed. need to check up Agreed. well not all policyholders are aware that if you have a claim repudiated by an insurance company you can refer it to the short-term ombudsman office this is to help resolve where you feel that you've been prejudiced there's no cost for this there's a step that everyone should take to avoid problems with claims Read your policy with particular reference to the endorsement and terms and conditions, but not at 11 o'clock at night. Craig, I'd like to thank you for joining thank me this you, morning. Thank Please you. understand that tonight's program is to provide information and should not be construed as advice. Next week's program will once again be dealing with estate planning, and if you need to get hold of me, my details will appear on the screen. I'd like to thank you for watching, and good night.